our next step is going to be the ZVG portion of our program and this is going to be uh, including how to set up vector MAME uh, with the menu program and everything else. So first thing you're going to do is start off by in Windows, we're actually going to use Windows 7 as our starting point. And we created a, cr a few folders over here. These are the files I, that I have for you to download. Uh, they contain some, some pre-configured information. We'll be going back to those in a second. These are the ROM files. You need to find these on the internet. Uh, they contain all the software, the actual game software for the games you need. The, uh, this folder is the ZVG 4.4. Now this is an exact copy of the CD that came with your system. And there's a folder here I, call, I created called CD. And if you look to this CD folder, it's completely empty. So you're going to create an empty folder and you want to put the we're going to put the build the configuration in here. This is actually how we're going to build our configuration. We're going to put all the files into here and to have it ready so we can just copy it onto our DOS machine. We're going to start by copying off the ZVG CD files. We're going to start by copying the DV MAME directory. So we're going to take the entire DV MAME directory and we're going to right click and going to drive it over here and choose copy. That's going to copy all those files into that folder. Then it went pretty fast because we're on a pretty fast computer and, and let's face it, modern day computers are a lot faster than DOS computers. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the DV main folder and we're going to see that it's copied all these particular files in there. Next thing we're going to do is go back over here to this disk and we're going to pull up the VM menu 1.12 folder. Now inside of here you'll notice there's a bunch of uh, software and we're actually going to mix these two files together. So we're going to click on the top one, click on the hold the shift key down and click on the bottom one. That's going to select all those. We're going to right click and drag, say copy here, and copy those files as well. Okay, now what we've done is we've actually copied all the files. We've kind of combined all of our files to make what we want. Our next step will be to copy our ROMs folder. So now we're going to close off the ZVG main, uh, folder and we'll copy the ROMs folder which we've already created with all of our ROM files in it. It'll ask me if we need to merge them or not. And we say yes. Another thing we need to do is to move the samples directory over in, so we'll just copy that in as well, and it'll ask us if we uh, are. Uh, it'll ask us if we want to you know, accept the change, and um, if we do that, it'll automatically add the samples folder in. These are the samples, sound samples that uh, give us the stuff that Main can do. Um, it, it plays it through the sound card, so you really want to have those if you can. The files that we gave you to use to configure your system with included some additional files inside the DV main directory. Now there was a release of that that went up on the internet that came out when we first put it up. So if you go into your DV main directory and you don't have these fold files inside there after you've unzipped this file, um, make sure you, you find that they are. Inside here you'll see that there's, there's a series of four different files. They are actually on the original CD that came with it, but they're kind of, it takes some looking to find them. Um, in, in addition, I've included a vmm.bat file, which if you look at your other, other, other files, you'll notice that there is already one of those. What you could do with this file, if you wanted to, was use this one instead. It presets the, the uh, sound blaster as the, as the sound source, but pretty much it's the same exact one as the one that's out there. So you don't need to take that if you don't want to. So the first thing we're going to do is go back one level on the, on the DB main folder, that one, all the files that we gave you part of this install. And then you're going to go back over to the other one. We're going to go back one level as well there. So now we just have the DV main folder over here and a DV main folder over there. I'm going to right click again and drag and then say copy here. And do you want to merge it? Yes we do. And it's going to say do you want to do this? Do you want to copy and replace whatever? Uh, we'll say copy and replace. We're going to be using a CDRW disk and we're going to use that to copy these files onto. This saves you a lot of money because you don't have to keep using disks that you're going to end up using for one time only. Of course you could use a full, full one just to keep as a backup, so up to you, but that's what we're going to use. 
Okay, so we're going to just copy the DV main folder that we made, and I'm going to drop a copy of it into the CD compilation over here. This will put all those files in there. If we go over here and look, we'll see that all the files are listed below there. And you also could see the uh, additional files down there below it. So that gives you a good example of what's going to go on the disk. Um, our compilation is ready. All we got to do now is use the burn button. I'm using Nero. Um, you may have other utilities you use, or uh, Windows and Macintosh also will have the ability to uh, burn them as well. We'll click on burn. One other thing you may be wondering is, is what are the names of the, of the ROM files that you're going to need? Because you need just to have certain vector ones and not like a complete collection. So what I found was is that the vmmenu.ini file, which you'll find had been cre created on our uh, on our CD, it's also in the in the menu folder. Um, if you look at that vmm menu file, it'll actually name all of the files that you're going to need to have. So like Space Fury, it's got Space Fury and Space for S P A C F U R A and Y. So if you look at that right there where it shows it there. Um, you see, you see all the names. If you get all these files that, that it shows here, uh, elim two a, elim two, all these files. If you get them all and put them in the folder, then you'll be able to run all of these particular software. Now, obviously, legally, you have to own all these boards to do this. So that's up to you, of course. Okay. Well, we're back at the basement, and um, I know it's my messy basement, but actually right here, this is probably the worst part of the whole basement, you know. So, at any rate, we're going to look over here, and you'll see that we've got a space duel sitting there. Uh, that's the back of it, of course, with the back open. That's your space duel sitting there, and that's what we're going to be interfacing our uh, all this into. So, let's go back and we'll uh, take a look at the screen, and we'll copy those uh, that directory back over and get our stuff going. Okay, we've inserted our... CD into the drive and now we're going to change change to the D drive and then we're going to go into the uh, we'll take a directory listing make sure we see what we need to see and there's our DV meme directory so now we're going to do is we're going to X copy D colon backslash DV meme space C colon backslash DV meme slash e that means it's going to copy empty file empty folders and everything else that goes along with it and subdirectories and empty folders tell it it's a directory everything's fine so we're going to look at c drive again we should see a dir and see that there's a DV main directory in there, and there is. If we do edit on VMM bat, this takes us to a file which will allow us to then change some settings. Um, what we've done inside of here, if you look down at this part of the part of the screen down the bottom down here, is over on the right side of this it says sound card is one. That's going to automatically set the sound card for one whenever a game is selected. Okay, this is the Zector board. Um, it has a couple of different parts we should point out. Um, on the right side of the board over here, you'll see that there is a um, connector. This plugs into the cable that they, they supply or that you can build that uh, connects to your vector monitor. On the other side over here, you'll see this is the parallel port connection. The uh, parallel port has a cable end that will plug into your uh, your PC. So your, obviously your PC has got to have a parallel port on it. An additional connector that you need to know about is the power port. This is where you plug your 18 volt adapter in. Uh, that's what plugs in and gives the board its power. There are three sets of jumpers. One here, one here, and one here. And these three sets of jumpers are used to configure the board. Now we have the board configured for a 6100, uh, 6101 actually um, monitor, which is a Wells Gardner monitor. Um, what you would do was go through the manual and find the 
page that correlates to the monitor you're using. In this case, it tells you the various jumper settings that you need to set on the board. We're going to start by plugging in the parallel port, and that plugs into the big slot on the back of your PC. Um, I would think you'd have to have a machine with a built-in parallel port. I guess you could get one that plugs into a slot. Uh, the question would be whether it would work or not due to the fact that uh, parallel ports live in a certain area of memory. So there's our parallel port cable plugged in. This is the iPack, and the iPack is an interface between the keyboard and the control panel on the game. You'll plug the control panel items into these little slots down here. We'll be wiring this later on in the process. The keyboard plugs into this cable over here, this black cable that's going in, goes back to the keyboard slot on the PC. And then we have an actual keyboard plugged in over here that allows us to pass through the keyboard for while we're testing and doing other things. Looking down at our cabinet, I'm going to take this connector off and I'm going to replace it with the connector from our cable that came, came for our uh, Zector. So I'm plugging that cable back in down there. It's the one with the three wires. It's a red, a yellow, and a black. We'll take the cable off the back of the monitor and replace it with the cable that came from the Zector. Then we're going to plug in our monitor to the slot in the side. And we're going to plug in our parallel port to the other side. And then we're going to plug in the power and once we plug in the power, we get a light on the front of it. I have a lot of light on this, maybe you can't see that, but the light will come on. And uh, then we're about ready to test. Okay, we're at a C prompt, and we're going to go to the DV main directory. And after we're in the DV main directory, we're going to uh, do a DIR. And uh, what we're looking for is up right near the top of the screen right there. It's VM menu, and we're going to run that. I just type in the name. And a lot of stuff goes by real quick, basically telling you the names of the uh, ROMs it found um, and all the details about it. Now, it seems like nothing is happening at this point, and it actually is. One of the things, the first things we're going to see is that there's two lights on the Zector board now. And we're going to turn on the game. Now we just heard a noise. You can probably hear the buzzing noise. And that's what's known as vector chatter, if you didn't know that one. And that's the monitor actually drawing the lines on the screen. It's a really good sign. Now there's a light down here next to this fuse. And my shadow is getting in my way of myself. But there's a light down here next to this fuse, an LED next to that fuse. If that light's on and you don't hear the chatter, that means you should turn off the monitor kind of right away. Uh, that means that the spot killer is on, and it's basically trying to avoid the monitor from getting damaged by no signal from the board. So, if you have no signal from the board, that's, a, that's when you have a problem. But you want to look for that light, the second light to come on. It's a good sign that you're going to be in good shape. And of course, this is the very best sign that things are okay. We've actually got the menu. There's no menu on the screen right now, but this is the menu, the, the uh, track mode for it. And that comes up by default, and there we are. Now it says press any control for a menu. And we haven't actually got that in place, so that's another video. But we are looking at a really a working uh, vector game. We saw some issues with sound and uh, other things and control panel to cover. But that's another video, another time, and uh, this is uh, proof that we've actually made it where we wanted to go. And we'll make this automatic all, all together. So when we turn the computer, the game on, the computer will come on with it and all that kind of stuff. So we'll be covering that later. But this is it. This is it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got your game going.